Jackie Biskupski, Mayor of Salt Lake City, thank you so much for being part of Three Questions. You're welcome. It's a pleasure to be here. You are coming to the end of your term as Mayor of the great city of Salt Lake. Mm -hmm. As you look back, what pleases you most about what you've been able to do? You know, I think it was really the team I built. You know, I came in to do very heavy lifting and you had to have the right experts surrounding you to make the things happen that I was looking at. And I built an extraordinary team that I'm very proud of. And what has that team been able to accomplish that really pleases you? You know, we have done so many things. Uh, we're moving towards clean air, finally, with real legislation being passed this year. Goals to go 100% renewable energy by 2030. Those goals can move as the cost of that clean energy comes down and down. Uh, so I'm very excited about that, and we'll see probably another 10 communities that will be going 100% renewable by the end of the year with that same commitment and on this same journey with Salt Lake City. And that is the first time we've seen real significant steps towards clearing the air. Was this job what you had expected it to be? I mean, was it bigger? Was it smaller? Was it different somehow? No, I, I, I expected it to be very difficult and engaging. And I'm, I've loved it. I, no matter who I talk to, I love my job. I do. And I am very grateful that I was able to serve. I, it was a goal of mine to be able to serve the community in this uh, way. And I, I, um, I've loved it. And yeah, some, some of it's been really hard. And some of it has been extraordinary and fun and rewarding and all those things. So it's been great. What, what has been the best part of being mayor of Salt Lake City? I think it's this uh, uh, work that we've been able to do with the entire country. You know, we went on our clean energy initiative to help our state move towards clearing the air. And that evolved into a whole national movement that I was a, a co-chair of uh, with Mayor Garcetti from Los Angeles. And I, our city was the 16th city in 2016 to commit to 100% renewable in the country. Mm. And uh, through the work that I had been doing, now there are 140 cities, plus another 450 that are working on their path. So it, that is really a remarkable story. You've had a lot of fun being mayor of Salt Lake City. Why not run for another term? Why are you hanging it up? You know, we have a family issue going on, um, and we were in... Uh, then we kind of got some tough news and we had to figure out really what had to happen as a family and, you know, a full-time job on top of a full-time campaign mm -hmm. and then trying to be there as a parent just wasn't going to mm -hmm. make sense to us. So we pulled out and I'm fine with that. I, you know, my wife and I, no regrets at all. We are, definitely made the right decision for our family. And we'll see what's next. Can you share with us what's going on behind the curtain that would have you say, I, I got to step away? Uh, no, no, you know, it's personal. And I, I would hope that everyone would understand that. Um, you know, every family goes through their stuff. Mm -hmm. um, some things are harder than others. And, you know, you, I think... All people need to know when to say when and be there when you really need to be there. From where you sit, what is the biggest issue that the citizens of Salt Lake City face right now? I think it's the inland port. Um, you know, we are in litigation trying to get back our land use and taxing authority. I think it's a hard issue for people to fully understand, but in, the, in a nutshell, I would say you're talking about a third of the land in Salt Lake City, and you're talking about the property taxes and the uh, half of the sales taxes going to this board to build a port. And 
not being able to access that funding for our schools, you know, not being able to access that funding for our infrastructure. Uh, we'll have to try and build the state to even recover funding for infrastructure that we are required to to provide. Yeah. Right. So it's a it's a real mess, um, and uh, our hearing is on Monday. Uh, I have um, no um, uh, inkling on when the decision will actually be made. Mm -hmm. it, it won't be Monday, but am I hopeful it'll happen before I leave? I really am. I'm nervous about it not happening before I leave, mm -hmm. and I want to make sure that we get a decision and we figure out a path. When it comes to the Inland Port, uh, there have been those who have criticized you for stepping away from that conversation. Do you have any regrets of not being actively involved at those Port Authority meetings? Oh, I didn't understand where you were going. I'm like, uh, absolutely not. And I think you can see what's happening in those board meetings. I there. They are puppet shows, essentially, and, and then they quit having them um, because they are now doing private secret meetings behind closed doors. I, the whole thing was structured in such a poor fashion that um, my ethics and my integrity, I just could not be a part of that. They did hire a director to um, try to pull people together. Um, You're and speaking of Derek Miller? No, no. They have a, an executive director they hired for the port. Mm -hmm. uh, that is all they have done. Um, they can't develop the land right now. Um, and uh, what I think what people need to realize is that the lawsuit is the priority around this issue right now. And that's where I've been spending my time, is working with our city attorneys, who, by the way, have done remarkable work on this case, and, and really highlighting the constitutional issues. And we're talking the Utah Constitution. We have not taken this to the federal level. There are Utah constitutional issues that we are addressing in this lawsuit. And there are a couple really key elements to it. So. To say the port is moving forward is, is not accurate. It is not moving forward. We are embroiled in a legal challenge that I believe the city will win, and uh, it will be interesting to see what happens uh, with the hearing after Monday. Do you anticipate this being tied up in the courts far beyond your term as mayor? You know, I'm worried uh, about that. Um, should we get kind of a interesting decision and not what we believe is our constitutional rights, um, then would the next mayor appeal? Uh, I, I'm not so sure and am concerned about that. Speaking of the next mayor, and we'll come back to the Inland Port in just a moment, but speaking of the next mayor, Erin Mendenhall, mm -hmm. as a city councilwoman, no doubt the two of you have had many, many conversations. Uh, have you discussed where the Inland Port is going to go under her administration? I did meet with uh, 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 Mayor-elect Mendenhall this week. Um, I got silence in the conversation of the Inland Port. Really? What do you suppose that means? I don't know. You'll have to ask her. Hmm. If the Inland Port does move forward, what kind of an effect do you think it will have on Utah's environment, its economy, and the <clears throat> quality of life? I, I believe um, that n there is no port, inland or otherwise, that's in the state, any state, uh, that isn't polluting. And uh, everyone's fears will probably be realized if uh, the city loses control of what, this, what gets developed on a third of our land. Mm. What about quality of life? Quality of life is already a concern. If you're, if you're anywhere on the foothills of the valley looking out, you can see the pollution that is being created by the growth that is happening here 
and the lack of electric infrastructure and lack of demand for electric vehicles in our state. So we really have a lot of work to do to make sure that we clean up our vehicles in this kind of bowl that we live in and we can't continue to ignore it if, if what we truly care about is clean air. And talk to me about the economic impact of an inland port. Would it not be something good for Utah and this entire area uh, in the Mountain West? You know, the city has extraordinary economic development experts already. And since I've been mayor, we've done a billion in economic growth. We've done 9,000 jobs. Uh, we're building a brand new airport on site. It's not like we don't know how to do economic development. We certainly don't need the state running a third of our city to do economic development and do it correctly. In light of the fact that you spent so long in the Utah legislature, were you surprised that the state wanted to come in and run this whole Inland Port Authority project? and and has that cost you any relationships between Salt Lake City and Capitol Hill? You know, Hill? we originally talked about cleaning up the landfill and trying to develop that space. It's one of the most developable spaces if you can clean it up. Um, and that's where discussions originated from. And I think the state... Um, their gross overreach into authority and tax dollars and, you know, um, is unfortunate not only for our community, but if we lose this suit, that means they could go into any community and take their land and their land use authority and their tax dollars and do exactly what they're doing to us. And we need these funds for our schools, we need these funds for our infrastructure, we need these funds to run government, local government. As you look back uh, on your time as mayor, yeah. what was the high point for you? What was the low point for you? Hmm. You know, I, the job has been so great. Like there's so many high points, you know. We were bringing, you know, the all-star game is fun. Yes. We're, we're bringing the Olympics back. That'll be fun. You know, we hosted the United Nations Civil Society Conference here. You know, extraordinary opportunity for our community to participate in an international conversation around what it means to create an inclusive and sustainable community. You know, we are restructuring homeless services and we're delivering services in a much more compassionate and effective way. We are working on law enforcement and changing how we do law enforcement in this city. Our crime is down 30% across, across the city. Um, and we have the first law enforcement strategic plan. We're handing out awards to law enforcement officers who are de-escalating situations. Mm. And that's, that kind of stuff makes me so proud. You know, we're changing how things have always been done and we're doing them better. To what would you uh, attribute that drop in the crime rate here in Salt Lake City? I think it was the strategic law enforcement plan, the work that Chief Brown and I and others on his team have done in working with the community, kind of going back to the beat model, getting our officers more engaged in conversations with the neighborhoods that they're serving. So it's, it's been a number of things, for sure. Mm. But having a real strategic plan has mattered. We have the first transit master plan ever. And for the first time ever because of that, you have kids who live on the west side and go to East High School who now can stay after 4 p.m. I don't think people knew that there's this whole group of kids who relied on this transportation that ended at four o'clock and could not fully participate in their school. Mm. That's finally happening this school year. Wow, that, that's gotta help uh, community buy-in and a wonderful well, opportunity to mix the two sides of the city that have- Well, those kids have always been on the, on the east side. Yeah. They have been bused for years, but nobody cared enough 
about their well-being to say, hold on, you have to leave at four o'clock? That's just wrong. Mm. You should have the same educational opportunities and the same opportunities to be involved in sports, to attend your plays, to be a part of your arts programming, and to stay in your school and not go home and maybe be enticed to do things you otherwise wouldn't be doing. Mm. As you step away from the office of mayor, are you satisfied with the direction that the city is headed in? Well, I was very excited to see that poll that came out this week. I don't know if you saw it, but it said that 85% to 90% of the people that live here believe the city is heading in the right direction. So as a mayor, what more do you need? That's, yeah. that, those are good I numbers. Gotta make you smile. Salt Lake City has elected three female mayors now. You get the impression yes. that the girls are taking over the place. I wouldn't call them girls. <laughs> <laughs> the ladies are taking over the place. You know, women need to lead, and that conversation is happening all over the world. You have the first female of Rome, the first female mayor of Paris. You know, women have to be leading. We're in a time crunch when it comes to climate change, and Women have to be leading these conversations. We can't continue to just allow the same conversations to be happening over and over and expect different results. Women have to get in there, they have to lead, and they have to help direct the new path that has to happen in a very short window of time. Do you feel like a pioneer in any way in that way? Absolutely, and I am, I'm grateful that I've had that opportunity to pioneer female leadership in this state. And I look forward to what's ahead for me. I think I'll be doing climate change work on a national level and, and be a part of those conversations still, which is an extraordinary opportunity, not only for me, but for all the, all the kids in the country. You know, I, I want to be helpful. They need a future. You were the second female mayor elected to Salt Lake City's uh, executive office. You are the first openly gay mayor of Salt Lake City. Yeah. Was that ever a factor in how you approached your job? No. Oh, no. No. You know, as I think, I think just who I am has always played a key role in how I was doing my job. You know, I, I came in as somebody who wanted to truly create a city with more equity and opportunity. And... I think we have accomplished that in some level. There is a lot of work that has to be done to really take down these barriers that are historic barriers to equity. But one of the elements of doing this work has been bringing in a staff and a team of people that represent the city we serve. And I've had the most diverse staff of any mayor in the history of this city. And I'm proud of that. And I'm proud of the work that everyone has done. Everyone on my team has worked so hard and brought change with their, their efforts and have incorporated really an, a community empowerment mindset for the mayor's office that I hope continues. As you finish your term as mayor of Salt Lake City, yeah. what message would you like to convey to the citizens of this city that you've led? Well, the message is one of gratitude. Uh, I have felt like this is the absolute best job that I've ever had and an extraordinary opportunity to serve in a different capacity. And... You know, I, I want people to know that um, I'm not leaving because it was hard, not even close. I knew it would be. Um, I'm leaving for the right reasons. And, um, and what I want women to know is they should step in and step up and they should be leading, not just in politics, but at work at home, you know, lead the conversations wherever you are. And finally, what is next for you? What comes next after you leave the office for the last time? You know, I'm not sure. I'm looking at climate change and the opportunities around that work. And 
um, there, there are some great opportunities. So we'll see where we land as a family. I want to make sure my family's okay and that whatever decisions Betty and I make uh, that we're considering the whole family in the opportunities that might lie ahead for me. All right. Well, Mayor Janky Biskupski of Salt Lake City, thank you so thank much you. for being part of Three Questions. You're welcome.